I wrote a, an email to Brian Lord, the CEO of CAA, the Creative Arts Agency, uh, this morning, and I'm going to read it, which kind of feels like emailing the Pope except I think I'd have an easier time getting a meeting with the Pope, but uh, here goes nothing. Hi, Brian. I'm reaching out to request an hour long interview with you to discuss some concerns and ideas which could potentially end the actor's strike and help improve the mental health of Hollywood in general. The Writing Lab, a new process involving actors, writers, and directors working together in a semi-isolated environment for 30 days, collaborating and co-learning bet between roles, no drugs or alcohol, possibly clinically supervised cannabis and psilocybin therapy for extra incentive, and uh, professional mental health care, physical exercise, healthy food, and of course, writing. Results include increased mental wellness across the entire industry. Behind the scenes workers too, why not? They've got knowledge to contribute. A certification akin to the um, American Kennel Club Therapy Dog Certification, except for human writers. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the comparison I thought of. Um, and masterpieces of art created in a crucible of deep artistic soul dredges. Four years ago, I set up my LLC, Imagination for Sale, becoming a CEO of my own company. I read that CAA has 35 board members that you've got to get to agree, which sounds exhausting. <laughs> I'm seeking collaborators co-learners, and the most impactful way to utilize my wealth of skills and experience. An hour-long interview is the first step in the writing lab process. My concerns are varied and understandable. The wake of Harvey Weinstein has been a slow, painful, seemingly never-ending process of uncovering the damages as victims find the courage to come forward. I hate admitting to my own victimization because I've never met the man. No one believes me, not even my mom. Gangs of New York was a $400 million movie that wouldn't have happened if I hadn't written a letter to Leonardo DiCaprio when I was 12 years old. Harvey Weinstein read my tween love letter and that makes me sick. There were references to my life in that movie References that only could have been derived through invasive private investigation of my family. Martin Scorsese seems the most responsible for this. Harvey Weinstein paid for it. I may, may never get them to confess, but they also can't shut me up about it. The writing lab was inspired by Leonardo DiCaprio. Leo started talking to me in January of 2022, and he's still afraid to meet me in person. Rick Yorn, Leo's manager since, since he was 19 years old, has complete control over Leo's finances and his romantic life. Leo has told me this himself. Rick has psychological control over Leo too. Rick may have encouraged Leo's ex-girlfriend to sex, sexually assault him to get herself pregnant, she faked a pregnancy, in order to trap Leo. I'm not making any of this up and they're not refuting it. Please do so in the comments if you have any evidence to the contrary. I can't get anyone to listen to me, not even the LAPD, because it seems like no one cares what happens to Leo, especially not Rick Yorn. I've emailed Rick screenshots of Leo th threatening suicide several times, and Rick did nothing. I tried, I really tried to impress that on his assistant on the phone, just hating Rick Yorn for putting this poor woman in the middle of this sleazy situation, <laughs> like he does with Leo. 
Uh, and where was I? I really tried to impress upon its assistant. It's just, I said, do you really want to work for someone who would do that? And there was a pause. Rick is using her as a human shield. Same as Leo. Leo has done and said some horrible things in the two years we've been talking and probably before, but he wasn't in the driver's seat. He's in a lot of ways still that 19 year old who's never read a contract in his life. I can't help him from this side of the screen. If Leonardo DiCaprio is unsatisfied with his life, what are all the actors working towards? This shows the dysfunctions inherent to the system from the very bottom to the very top. Rick Yorn has no checks and balances, no 35 board members to herd like cats. There's no certification for managers, no regulation. The actors are fighting for their money, not really acknowledging where it goes. How many people live off of their income? If they did, the entire workforce would turn around and demand reforms from that side too. Money can only buy so much happiness. We will produce better art if we include mental health care and opportunities to expand knowledge and skill sets between collaborators. Every human has a story to tell. Writing helps us communicate. Actors will gain more control of the narrative of their artistic expression and their personal lives if we invest the chance to find their individual voices. Acting, like all performance art, can be a deeply personal experience. Otherwise, there's no substance on the surface. We need to dig deeper, find the roots of traumas collectively holding us back from being honest with ourselves. The longer we ignore these old wounds, the more they metastasize. I have a degree in theater from the Evergreen State College. I can act, but I've been extremely resistant to being labeled an actress, when to my core, I've always been a writer. If acting gets me a foot in the door, I'd give it my all. I can even make myself cry a few different ways. One method is watching the Oh Maria scene from Sister Act. I adore the moment when the little nun finds her voice, finds herself. Whoopi Goldberg was so in her element, she was the Carrie Fisher of that scene. And by the way, I am so happy that Whoopi Goldberg is meeting with the Pope. I think I would like to hang out with Whoopi Goldberg and the Pope and watch Sister Act and like eat popcorn. That would be a really fun evening. Um, <laughs> but anyway, the scene, that scene, you know, when they're singing the first time in the church uh, in Sister Act, it didn't make me cry before I petitioned to get Carrie Fisher a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. The delighted looks of pained, grieving fans seeing me cosplaying her iconic character changed me. Leia was hers. She would not have been as badass without Carrie Fisher. I realized that she was one of the writers on Sister Act and she didn't get credit. And that breaks my heart and makes me that much more determined to claim my own voice. I can do that only by helping others. Otherwise, it's not worth it to me. What exactly is your job, Brian Lord? I mean no disrespect, I'm genuinely interested. 
from this side of the screen, your job seems to come down to helping people find their voices so they can create the art that feeds us all. Right now, you're caught in the middle of a battle for human rights, trying to please everyone while getting attacked by bitter rivals. I understand that feeling, and I am compelled to help. CEO to CEO, I believe we can resolve these conflicts while sim simultaneously revolutionizing the industry. It all starts with a conversation. I'm looking forward to speaking with you. Thank you, Kristen Grady.